So it's a pleasure to have this opportunity to talk about some of the research that my lab is doing. Um, our work is on augmented reality, and that refers to the idea of combining virtual media of various sorts with the real world, doing it interactively in real time, and doing it so that it's registered in 3D, which is just a fancy way of saying that it's aligned in terms of what you see or hear or otherwise experience with the real stuff around you. So a uh, brief example over here at the lower right-hand corner is some much older work that we did back in the mid-90s. This is a view of part of a space frame building. And now we're seeing some very simple overlaid graphics, but just by itself. And when you combine them together, in this case using a see-through head-worn display, you're able to see this information in context telling you about how to insert one of these struts uh, in the process of actually putting the building together. So, uh, my lab has been working in a variety of different aspects of augmented reality, uh, navigation, tourism, games, entertainment, uh, and one particular uh, task domain that we find uh, really intriguing is assisting people in performing various kinds of tasks, maintaining stuff, assembling things, uh, fixing things, uh, operating uh, equipment. And so one example is some work that we've done over the past couple of years um, on trying to assist people in assembly. And so what I'm going to show you is a brief video uh, that shows a view through one eye of a two-eye uh, head-worn display, in which we're looking at a particular task with overlay graphics explaining how to perform the task. And what my lab does is we build the infrastructure, we build the actual uh, prototype applications, and we also run user studies to compare these kinds of, of systems with more classical ways of explaining and assisting people in doing things. So what we're seeing over here is, again, a view through one eye of this head-worn display. All the overlaid stuff is happening live. There's highlights to indicate, in this case, which part you're supposed to pick up. These are tops and bottoms of an aircraft um, turboprop engine uh, combustion chamber. And we're going to put them together, so we have to pick up the right top. All these pieces are being tracked. The system knows exactly where they are. If you pick up the right piece, you can then advance to the next step. In this case, turning that top relative to the bottom. So the uh, green uh, circle and green rectangle uh, line up. And then that little arrow goes away. And this is actually a scene from a user study in which the person is putting a nail through that hole. Normally, there'd be bolts around all the 20 holes at the top, but we don't really need to do that for the study. And we're done. So in an example of a case like that, we're actually able to show that people can take a lot less time to perform a task and actually make fewer mistakes than if they were uh, learning how to do this or being helped in doing it by using conventional documentation. So in addition to working with people um, individually, we're very interested in how multiple people can work together to perform a task. Sometimes those people are co-located in the same place, and sometimes they might actually be in very different locations. And so in this case, you're seeing a view, uh, lower left-hand corner over there. This is a view of a scale model being seen by a remote uh, expert. Um, they're pointing to a location they'd like a local technician who's actually on site to go to. And then we're seeing in the major part of the slide over there, a view through one eye of that local technician showing a representation of where that remote expert would like them to go to help perform the task. And this notion of getting a person to go somewhere that they're not is very important to us. We have some recent work in which we've been looking at ways of being able to crisply define rather fuzzy ideas of where you want someone to go. So you might not want them at an exact location looking in an exact direction, but maybe within a range of locations looking in a range of, of directions. And what you're seeing here is a sort of thing that looks somewhat like a, an airbag being deployed, and it actually represents a target that you see in your field of view. You get your head inside of it, and now, as long as you're inside, you're within this range of good places to actually perform the task, and there's some additional stuff in there that gets you pointed in the, one of the range of, of good directions to actually be looking. Uh, sometimes we want you not to physically go somewhere, but to go somewhere vicariously. And so we have one piece of work we did in which we are, in this case, doing a furniture layout task. And if you want to see what that virtual furniture looks like from different locations, rather than having to actually physically go there, we can make it very easy for you to go there vicariously and be able to quickly go back and forth seeing what something looks like uh, in place without actually having to move to those locations. 
Um, sometimes we like to work with um, more than a single display. Everything I've shown you so far uses one display, handheld or head-worn. Um, and what I'm going to show you now uses multiple displays. In this case, we're looking at a rear-projected horizontal tabletop display, multi-touch surface. And we're seeing it through a tracked head-worn display, which the system knows the location and orientation of that head-worn display. So we can therefore show things that are situated relative to the things you'd see if you just looked at that tabletop. And as well, we're also using a handheld display that's tracked and that plays together with all the other displays so we can have information, depending upon what we're trying to explain, be on one, both, or for that matter, all of the displays that you're seeing. So I'm going to show you a little video shot through one eye of this head-worn display. And what we're seeing is uh, this uh, urban uh, visualization um, prototype in which we're seeing what maybe to some of you will be, will be familiar as the Flatiron District. Um, building models situated on top of the tabletop. It's multi-touch, so we're kind of obligated to show people translating, rotating, and scale. Um, but other than that, if we now look at around, um, we've basically scraped information from a variety of social media websites, uh, Foursquare, um, uh, we have some information about New York City 311 calls, um, and then we've located them relative to the buildings that they're related to. And so now we are accessing that database with this little tracked handheld phone, and we can get more information, for example, on one of the 311 calls um, and find out more about it. So in addition to using these kinds of, of rather aggressive displays, uh, we're also interested in things that are becoming more and more commonplace now. Very small, very lightweight uh, things like Google Glass, for example. Uh, not the best platform for doing augmented reality because it's very, very small, only seen by one eye off somewhat to the side. Um, but we're right now looking at ways of taking some of the kinds of things we do with these large field of view stereo displays and seeing if, we, seeing if we can apply them to this uh, smaller uh, form factor um, of things like glass. And then uh, just to sum up, um, the main theme over here in the work that we do is this idea of user interface design for wearable computing in general, for augmented reality in particular, dealing with multiple people, multiple viewpoints, both uh, ones you physically go to and virtually go to, and multiple displays of various sorts all working together in concert. And so at this point, I'd like to acknowledge the, my colleagues, uh, students, um, and other folks and funding agencies that have worked with us, and maybe have a little chance to uh, take some questions. Where do I see a hand in the audience? Am I missing one? Yes, right here. Um, so what is the benefit, mm -hmm. what do you see as the benefit of using a, uh, as one of those, like the surface displays that you uh -huh. have there as opposed to just using a completely augmented uh -huh. approach? Great question. So the advantage of that surface display is that if you walk in the door and you see people standing around having this you know, heated conversation about something you can't see, you're left out. Um, so. If you walk in and we've got that surface there, you can walk up to it and you can point, for example, at a building footprint. And you can ask and, and have answered questions about it. Um, and there also, it turns out, there's some people who, much that we like to think everyone loves technology, there's some folks who do not want to put strange things in their head. Um, and so that's something that most people are going to be very comfortable approaching. Another question. I've got, let's see, anybody else up there? No? I'm going to ask a quick question. Um, this stuff, obviously, in your lab right now, mm -hmm. how, how far away from commercialization of any of these concepts? Uh, when will we see this uh, on our living, in our living room? Okay. Those are difficult questions to ask. I'm a technologist, and so I'm going to take the view that if everything works really smoothly. Now, I, back in the 90s, talked about by the year 2000. In the early 2000s, I talked about or 10 years from now. Right now, I think we're at the point 10 years from the early 2000s, talking about 10 years from now, that within the next 10 years, we're going to see a lot of this stuff really becoming real. Because you can go out right now and buy things like glass and several competitors. Uh, there are a number of companies that are ramping up to make things that currently, in many cases, are in dev kit format and turning into things that will be real products uh, over the coming years. So I think we're seeing a lot of things that are becoming real. For example, multi-touch displays um, and large displays. 
It was a long time after folks, technologists like me, predicted you were going to have a big display on your uh, living room wall that people finally had affordable big displays on living room walls. Mm -hmm. Things gen generally take a bit longer than we as technologists not worrying about the people issues and the corporate issues uh, are willing to give credit. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.